Stephen, as you know, is a dear brother to me and called me during the week and said, my brother, I've got a testimony. Someone is here whose testimony is going to encourage someone. I thought, Lord, you are doing something. It's not by accident that you are bringing these people to come and testify to this church. And so I said yes because of the trust and the closeness between us. And those of us who were in the first service have heard the testimony, I'm going to stop here and invite Auntie Lucy to come. Auntie Lucy lives in Vancouver, Canada, a born again Christian, and listen carefully to the testimony that uh, she's about to share. Will you come, my sister? Come, come here, uh, Praise the Lord. Okay, 
Okay, so are you ready to listen to what the Lord has done? Yes. Okay. When I was growing up in Ghana, my big brother, who was a soldier, beat me up for talking back to him. You know Ghana, there's a line, a, a thin line between abuse and discipline. Did you know that? They will abuse you, and then they will say they are disciplining you. So for talking back to him, he beat me up and he kicked me several times in my waist. And so as I was growing up, the ligaments that hold my uterus became very weak. And as a result of that, I could hold my uterus right in front of me. I had to go through three major surgeries. And on the third visit, the doctor said, they had to cut the uterus. And they said, you can never have children after that. And so they had me sign a consent form so that in future I wouldn't go back and ask them uh, for compensation or for anything. I wouldn't um, blame them for making me uh, a barren woman. I have many sisters and brothers. They all have children. So I thought, okay, maybe the Lord wants me to help my, my sisters look after their children. So I signed, the, I signed the form and had the surgery done. I wasn't very old, so I thought, well, I wasn't married. People are not going to know this until I'm married for a few years, and if I couldn't have children, then they will know. But unfortunately for me, there was a nurse who was my next door neighbor. And she happened to be on duty the night before the surgery. And when she found out what was going to be done to me, she went home and told everyone who cared to listen. And so by the time I came home from the hospital, thinking that, oh, nobody will learn. People already knew. And they started. In my culture, back to my culture, if you couldn't have children, that was trouble. People just ridiculed you. Nobody respected you. And so that's what happened to me. They started insulting me. I had many names. I lived in Cape Coast. And I had this big name, Sadi. People called me names. And so, one day, I was in my room. And I heard some ladies sitting behind my, my window talking about me. That made me very, very sad. And so I cried, and I cried, and I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know I'm not going to have any children, but if you, only you can take the pain out of all the insults that I'm receiving, that would be enough. Because I don't know how I'm going to live with this hurt in my heart. And after I prayed, I reached for my Bible. Beloved, this is not just a book. The Bible is the word of God. Whatever the Lord wants you to know is here. If you think coming to church once a week is going to cut it, you're wrong. Read the word to know the Lord, to know him and to know his power. Read the word of God. So that day, I reached for my Bible and I opened it randomly. I said, Lord, whatever you want to tell me, please let me open to that. So I opened it to Romans chapter 9 and the verses 6 to 9 said, I'm not saying that God's promise has failed, but not all the children born in the usual way are the children of God, but the children born as a result of God's promise, they are regarded as the true descendants. And God's promise was made in these ways. At the right time, I will come back and Sarah will have a son. And I thought, ooh, God is talking to me now. So that means at the right time, God will give me a child. Oh, it's not Sarah. Sarah is dead and gone. So 
was just me. It's Lucy. God is speaking to me. And so I was so happy. I believed that word. And I started thanking him for his promise. And lo and behold, I came here to this country. I met somebody who didn't want children. And so I thought, oh, I don't have any children, and you, you don't want children, so perfect. <laughs> but then, soon after we came together, I started getting sick, very sick, and I had to go and see the doctor. When I went, the doctor asked me to take my urine sample to the hospital. I didn't know what that was for. He said, pregnancy test. I said, why? <laughs> you don't know me? I can have children. I have been done this and that one. And he said, but you still have to take it. We have to know what's going on with you. And so I took the urine sample to the hospital. And the results came. And they said, positive. <laughs> Positive? I said, what does that mean? It means you're pregnant. <laughs> okay. And they said, you know, the hospital I went to, they said they couldn't handle it in that hospital. So they had to refer me to the hospital where Lady Diana had William. And beloved, if you are here and you don't even have the right papers to live here, don't worry. I didn't have it either. <laughs>
Lucy. If the uterus was taken away, especially when she was so young, then what kept the babies inside? Biologically, I'm just thinking natural. But this was supernatural, as the Lord told her in Romans 9. So this was supernatural, but I wanted to know medically what did they say? What was the babies? She said, What was your answer? She said, You didn't know. I have no idea. Okay. All right. Now, listen, we have medics in this church. We, are, we have academics in this church. After the first service, Auntie John Virtue was a senior midwife. She was a king's midwifery top. Dr. Bar Collington, when you talk about midwifery, it doesn't just, it's not just in this country, all over the world. Bar will be in church on Sunday, next week you'll be in, she'll be in China, she'll be in Sarah. When you talk about midwifery, these people are authorities. Auntie John chased me and said, Pastor, I've seen that incident now. Auntie John is not young. She's legal retired. She said, I've seen that incident once. And she said the baby was in the bowel of the woman. You didn't know. But Auntie John told me, he says, see, once where the woman couldn't conceive, but God made the baby survive in the bowel of the woman. Think about that. I said to Val, what about this testimony? She said, I know that professor. Professor Beard. In the hospital where Prince William was born. She said, uh, and then listen, I don't hear things. I'm not a doubter, but I try to prove things. <laughs> Dr. Valcourt said, Pastor, I know that professor, he is an authority in this area. And that's the, that's the professor that worked with that the Why am I saying this? If there's any doubters in the church, if there are any doubters, go to these hospitals. Hospitals have been named, professors have been named. And this is to the glory and honor of our Almighty. Stories like this. Boom. I was praying that a year from now I'll be dedicating some children. This will add to their faith. Yeah. And not only in the area of childbearing, in any other area. In any other area. God has done it for our dear sister, and God is about to do it for you. For you, for you, for you, for you. For you.